I call upon Honorable Pius Winky to make a speech. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Your Excellency the Governor General, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, his Chief Justice, all the ministers, members, people of Papua New Guinea. There are two important dates in life. One is the day you're born, and the other is the day you pass away. St. Michael, somebody was born on the 1936, and he passed away on the 26th of this month. During his space of life, the effect he had on society, the influence he had in our country, and in the region is so huge. In the last 14 days, many have paid condolences within the country, within the region, and they've described him in many ways. Samari was born to be a leader. He was a born leader. When he went to school and he became a teacher and later became a broadcasting officer, some of the big influences that add on him, they were influences that had effect on him, which just shaped him. As he was going to school in Sogeri, he built and met a lot of good Papua New Guinea mates. They were young. They were Papua New Guineans. They were going to school, seeing what their country was like, how they're experiencing it, and what the relationship was between our colonial masters and themselves. And while they were there, there were many other influences that were taking place. They see how other countries in the common world. The British Empire had many colonies in Africa and Asian region. They were seeing these changes that a black people in those countries were slowly becoming independent. The countries like Ghana became independent in 1957. Close by, they see Malaysia became independent in 1957. That made Samari. Samari was determined. Samari was the magnet that got Papua New Guinea young men together. And he started his journey. When he came to the administration college in 1965, he met another young Australian, Bob Hawke, who was a, who was a research officer with the ACTU, Australian Trade Union. Bob Hawke was young. And he was from the Labour Party. The Labour Party in Australia were more progressive. They were international. They were not in government that time, in 1965. Samari became a politician in 1968. That shaped him. But that laid the foundation. Because he was in a region where he was able to pick it out the country, the region, Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, the Pacific. He could see that. So the relations it built with the Labour Party was so critical to the independence of this country. Bob Oak became the ACTU president in 1969. That's the time when Grand Chief Michael Samari became member of parliament in 68. That strong relationship with the Labour Party was so fundamental to the success of this country. When he, he, he became, in 1968, when he became member of parliament, there were certain changes taking place. Tanzania, another country in Africa, became independent. Julius Nereri became the prime minister of Tanzania. In Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta became president in 1963. And in close by, Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew became prime minister in 1965. In 1967, there was another major event that took place. 
in Indonesia. Sokano, the founding prime minister, president of Sokano, was removed by General Suato. Now, this was all happening within the region, and Samari was a young man. Samari could see that, could see where his country will be. And it was the magnet that brought other Papua New Guinea like minded together. The country was not ready, Papua New Guinea was not ready for independence. Because in Australia, the Minty government that ruled Australia for many years, and there was an external affairs minister called C. Barnes, who said Papua New Guinea will never get independence. Luckily, in 1972, True Bob Hawke was president of the trade union movement in Australia. The Labour Party came into government in 1972. Before 1972, Whitlam, God Whitlam, who was opposition leader, traveled throughout Papua New Guinea in 1971. He went to Rabaul, and young John Caperton and Oscar Tamur were there. And he told them that your country will be independent when I get into government. Luckily, in 1972, the Labour Party came into government in Australia. The rest was history. God Whitlam was an internationalist. God Whitlam was a non-racist. God Whitlam was the right man in that region. He pushed Papua New Guinea to become independent. So, in 1972, we were moving in the right direction. Thanks a lot to Sir Michael Samari, Sir Julius Chen, Sir Yambagi Okok, Sir Thomas Kavali, Abeya Oliwali, Dr. Tareka, many others, Oscar Tamur, John Capital. They were the founding fathers who took our country forward in 1972. These changes were so critical in our country. Mr. Speaker, the most important, which I believe in 74, was the planning, constitutional planning committee. Somebody knew that. The Grand Chief knew that. He has to build a house. What kind of house he must build? The house must be the constitution of Papua New Guinea. That is the house. That is where the foundation is. That is where the posters are. That is where the branches are. He set up a team of Papua New Guineans. Paulus Arik, John Capatun, John Kapa, Madabe Yui, Mackenzie Daugi, and many others. They traveled right throughout the world. They went to Tanzania, to African countries. They went all over. They traveled without Papua New Guinea throughout our country. Samari was smart. He knew he had to put this house together. What is he going to create? The creation, make sure the constitution was right. The constitution is the foundation. He gave priority to that. That is why today, when we pay our respects to this great man, this, I call him chief all the time. When we respect him, we must think about what is laid down for us. The constitution is so clear. The executive government, it made sure it's clear. The courts, the parliament, what are the powers? What are the functions? It stated clear in the most detailed constitution. Somebody was clear. The executive cannot interfere with the courts. The courts cannot interfere with the parliament. The separation of power was clear. Today, when we pay respect, we must think about what we are going to do now from now onwards. Honorable members, what we can, we can own him through this. Prime Minister of the country must know that he cannot interfere with a police force on operation methods. The Prime Minister of the country must know that he cannot interfere with the courts. The Prime Minister of the country must know that he cannot interfere with the public prosecutor. The Prime Minister of the country must know he cannot interfere with the Ombudsman Commission. He is a policy maker. He is not supposed to interfere with the operationals of those institutions that Samara built. 
Same, the parliament cannot interfere with the executive government. The courts cannot do. Our founding father, Michael Thomas Samari, created this to protect this country. He created this. Every prime minister, every minister must know. We must know that. When you interfere with the police force and operational methods, you are weakening the system that Samari built. Because the powerful, the rich, will monopolize and control. The silent, the small majority will be marginalized. That is not Samari's dream. Samari's dream is make sure there's justice, fairness, things are operated properly in our country. All I want to say today, we pay great respect to the chief. I come to know him in 1977, 75 when I was a university student. Those were the exciting times. He was an inspiring leader who inspired the young ones, who inspired all of us. My first time to meet him was at St. James Sito used to own Link's Freezer, still there in Gordon's. Late Cecil Abel, Charles' father, used to work very close to me, Samari. And I was at university. My student mates asked me to go for the elections. So I had to go and see Cecil Abel. Cecil introduced me to Samari Kiki. Samari Kiki, I went to meet him, and that's the time I met Chief with a group of young men. The impact that he had on me has changed me, made me who I am today. Today, I ask you, all of us members of parliament, we have a big responsibility to our country. All of you have a big responsibility to this young country. Power must be exercised with care. Power does not mean you're custodian of the people. It's not something you're born. Power must be exercised with care for everything we do. Look at this great man in front of us today. He's lived a simple life. He's done all the right things. He's our best teacher. In his death, we can only learn from him. The way we can honor him is to honor him, to respect our constitution, respect all the institutions he has set up. Those of you appointed as police commissioner, you must always know that the new constitutional office holder, you're not to carry out the instruction of a minister or a police prime minister on operational methods. You are the police commission. The chief of Bootsman commissioners, you must know that you are not there to be manipulated and carry out instructions of politicians. You are there to do a job. The public prosecutor, you are there to do an independent job. The courts must do the same. If we all practice and do all these right things, our people will be safe, our country will be safe. Lady Vororica, Ata, Betha, Sana, Michael Jr. My time to meet and sit with him, I said, Grand Chief was when I was sitting beside him at the funeral service of Samekari. He was in the mill. I was sitting on the side. The Prime Minister was sitting on the other side. I sat with him. And then we finished the service and I said goodbye to him. I'm going to see, go to the independent jail to see McCary's body put down. I said goodbye to him. That was the only time I met him. The second time, I wanted to come and pay him a visit on the 25th. I told my son Nathan Winty, get in touch with the Samari boys 
and let them know I'm coming down to see him. I flew down on Thursday in the afternoon, the last flight from Hagen. Came down and gave a call. Nathan gave me the, asked, gave the call for Arthur, Sana, and Beth uh, Dalsi. I called. Dalsi answered. I'm coming to pay a visit to my friend. You see, they can I come to the hospital? Dalsi said, Papa, and me put him in intensive care. You come to monitor and me by carry me go looking. On that day, I was thinking a lot, sleeping. The next morning, I got up. The first news I got was on ABC. I didn't see him. I came to see him. I didn't see him. He was a great pop when he got in. On behalf of all the people of Papua New Guinea, Grand Chief, you have influenced the lives of all our people in the country. I joined Sir Julius Chen on behalf of everyone, pay our biggest respect and also say thank you to the people of ACP, to the people of Murik, and also another politician I want to mention is Sir Peter Luz, who was so instrumental in getting Samari into Parliament with this Rest in peace.